Okay, so we're going to have a look at the six Earthship principles. This is going to be, we're just going to cover principle one here. Solar angles were discussed previously at the meeting at the Eco Home. Uh, you can grab that from this presentation. I'll drop it in the appendix at the bottom. Uh, this is available on the website, and I think it's live on on Google Drive. I've published it as a web page as well. So let's have a look at solar heating, uh, also known as solar gain or passive. You might have come across the term passive house in passive house designs if you've been investigating eco homes at all. Uh, it's fairly simple. So looking at this slide, sunlight enters the building during the day. The floor walls, etc., absorb energy and get hotter during the day. This stored energy is then useful during colder hours, such as the nighttime, winters, etc. They'll be radiating that heat back when the uh, when the temperature difference, when the temperature of the room drops down, the temperature of the air in the room is lower than that of the floors. Then they'll start releasing that energy into the room. The problem in Taiwan, though, usually is too much heat for about. <laughs> <laughs> for about eight or ten months of the year feels like all the time so we'll look at ways of reducing energy from the sun later such as roof overhangs cable awnings shades blinds curtains etc uh, we've got in the model for the in the model for the eco village I've thrown in some bamboo and trees uh, to show how shade from those affects where the sun comes into the building or onto the walls of the building as well uh, and a quick question to think about if you've, if you've never touched on this subject before is which materials would be better for absorbing energy? Air, stone, metal, water. Air and water being fluids that you can move about, right, from place to place. Water being much denser than air, so capable of storing much more energy. Uh, stone and metal, mm, solids, uh, dense, will store a lot of energy pound for pound what's better with you know stone or if you can get rammed earth that's effectively as dense as stone compared to metal that you have to mine I don't, yeah yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of expense with metal that you might decide to choose stone if you're going to use that as some kind of energy storage energy sink heat sink in your building so thinking about why those materials are better for absorbing energy in certain situations pros and cons of each is useful that's the end of solar heating. There's a couple of links here for one on solar gain on Wikipedia and one about solar chimneys. Um, that's old tech, very cool solar chimneys. Um, and this is uh, this is thermal cooling, so also known as a convection engine. When you look through the Earthship books, Earthship literature, Earthship websites, uh, they call it a convection engine uh, here and there, I think. So we can use heat to cool buildings. Hot air rises, as we all know, um, put energy into air and it will become less dense, it will expand. So hot air being less dense than cool air, the cool air will sink, the hot air will rise. And we can use a simple vent in the roof. These are gravity operated, you can pull them open, open with a rope. You could have a solar chimney uh, on the outside of the building doing this as well. Um, Earthships typically with a lot of glass at the front uh, are probably heating up that floor and the grey water planter at the front enough to to give you some, some decent convection up through the roof. But simple vent in the roof we can allow the hot air to escape that way and of course as that goes up inside the building and escapes through the vent in the roof. Fresh air is going to get drawn in through the ventilation pipe which runs through the earth bank at the back of the building. As it comes through that pipe from the outside it's cooled by the temperature stored in the earth underground is going to be lower generally than the temperature outside in the summer almost definitely in the summer <laughs> unless we have a really bad day. Uh, so the heat in the air in the pipe is going to warm up the, the stainless steel, whatever you're using in the in the ducting in the pipe itself. The the metal in the ducting will pass that heat then through to the uh, the earth in the earth bank. And obviously, there's a lot of mass in that earth bank, so 
that earth bank will absorb a lot of energy from, from warm air coming through it from the outside before you significantly warm up that earth bank. So that hot air going up out of the roof creates a flow with the warm air coming through the pipe, through the earth bank, being cooled and released into the room, then warming up at the front of the building and going up out of the roof vent again. So. Uh, solar chimneys, again, I've mentioned here, take a look at that old effective tech. When you look at this diagram, this slide here, um, you might see a solar chimney on the outside of the building, on the outside wall here. Um, the ones that you see in the desert, really old tech, are just, just stone a lot of the time. Um, you could make them out of sheet metal or anything, you know any kind of ducting again I suppose, anything that's going to heat up well in the sun and then the vent would go out through the front wall and into the solar chimney be a really simple thing to do. Um, let's have a look at the next slide, so here we've got some data from ResearchGate now, this was in Nicosia, yes Nicosia Cyprus um, not sure what their humidity is like compared to Taiwan but yeah looking at their Temperatures in the summer, this is somewhere around 35, 40, something like that. Ah, ambient temperatures, this spiky pink line here, that'll be the daily ambient temperatures by the looks of it. So air temperature, I suppose, the, the temperature around us. And this zero meters here, this will be ground level, I suppose, ground level temperatures. So the green line is the temperature under the ground at a depth of one meter uh, and you can see you're already getting a significant drop from surface temperature here just by going down a meter so if surface temperature here is about 42 degrees come down from 42 degrees we're getting a temperature underground at a meter of about 26 27 degrees by the looks of this let's have a look did I put a bigger chart now I can't zoom in on that okay so you're still getting a drop from from 40 say down to 25 26 so you're still dropping 15 degrees 25 might not be quite comfortable in the house but it's still going to knock a lot off your energy bill if, if you run in some kind of HVAC system uh, heating ventilation air conditioning system uh, it's going to chip quite a bit off your off your energy bills anyway but the sweet spot to me, if I remember rightly from looking at this graph, I think it's the orange line here that I'm tracing out now. Two meters orange line here. You go from under the ground at two meters, maybe about 18 degrees centigrade Celsius, up to about 25 degrees Celsius. So that's already a much more stable range of temperatures, 18 to 25, down to 2 metres. In terms of construction or excavation, that's probably a, a, you know, it's not too difficult to get down to 2 metres. You start getting down to 4 metres, you're definitely going to need some much more heavy duty excavating equipment, shutters, yeah, you don't want to be it. If it <laughs> you don't want to be in it if it collapses, right? So, trenches for for that kind of depth are much more difficult to construct. Um, but two meters, yeah, it's probably doable um, without adding too much expense to to that part of the project, and you get a really good seven degree basically variation in temperature. But the interesting thing about this is there's a lag. The lower down you go in the in the ground, the the more time it takes for for the sun to heat that ground up. So at a meter there, the green line shows it well. Outdoor temperatures here at about forty, or ground temperatures here at zero meters on the blue line, are about forty two degrees. Um, you look at the green line; the curve is lagging behind it as the ground takes time to warm up. So even though at a meter depth you still get more variation in the ground temperature it's still only at around 25 26 because the ground hasn't warmed up yet it's taking time to catch up with summer to warm the ground up and if you go down to the orange line is the orange line two meters here then it's down at about 20 that's still you know it's, it's going to take another 
60 days or so looking at looking at the graph here from about 200 to about 275 somewhere it's going to take another two months or so until the ground temperature at two meters all the energy from from that summer heat has worked its way down so 20 degree, 20 degrees on the orange line here in the summer might be might be really nice to have that coming into the building you're dropping down from ground temperatures at 42 daily ambient temperatures up near 30 somewhere um, 20 degrees might be very pleasant um, so yeah that seems to be the sweet spot but you can have a look for more data yourselves online for that in terms of thermal performance uh, this graph here I'll try and break this down you've got time of day from midnight here running through to midday and then to midnight again and this is showing the temperature spike at the warmest time of the day uh, the red area or the reddish pink area at the top of the chart here is showing high temperatures so I'm assuming this is for the highest point here would be the highest temperature in the summer at about 40 degrees C and I'm assuming this is 6 a.m. is usually the coldest time of day, right? Just before the sun comes up. So this is going to be the lowest temperature in the winter, about minus 30. So you can see they've got a huge temperature difference here. Even in the summer, let's have a look here. They're probably getting down to 15 degrees or something in the summer by the looks of it. Or maybe down to zero maybe this is the, the anyway there's a big big temperature difference so you can still see with the amount of te temperature variation they get from 40 degrees plus centigrade down to minus 30 centigrade this blue line here is no fuel at all that's just the building with sunlight vents vents in the roof air ducts bringing air through the earth bank in the back and it's staying around 21 degrees here 22, 23 in the summer, something like that. So to go from no fuel, which is the blue line, to the comfort line, which is the orange line above it, um, it's a very small increase in energy to get from 21 to 22 degrees C compared to heating your house from <laughs> freezing or cooling it from 40 degrees down to, to 20 something. So that gives you an idea of not just how little energy they use, but how stable that line is throughout the year, right? That's a really stable line. If you put this, this place, okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> let's not complain too much. I'm grateful to live here. It's comfortable, etc., etc. But it's a concrete, it's a reinforced concrete apartment block. That wall there gets roasting hot in the summer. If you put this concrete box room out in the sun and out in the freezing cold, the temperature in here is going to be very, very similar to the temperature out there without some serious energy input, air conditioning and so on. So that little rant over, that's a, a really good graph to look at for, for temperature stability. Um, and that's about it for thermal cooling. You can have a look at, at solar chimneys and we'll get into shading and cable awnings and, and stuff like that in the next presentation.